Hey everybody, this is Skybase talking. So, first of all, well, it's a little weird to say this from the very beginning of the year and also a beginning of a tutorial, but uh, I like to apologize for those of you who have been really waiting on it. <laughs> um, I said something along the lines that I'll create a tutorial series and I said no promises, but I really wanted to promise you guys about it. Unfortunately, time, everything else, life, the universe, whatever, it's like just all this weight on my pack that I just couldn't really handle and 2016 got really tired and I just couldn't really put my hands on it. But it's 2017 and I really want to start some kind of tutorial thing. So here I am sitting down and I'm just able to do one. So this is a scene from Medita Neo vs. Kara uh, by NCH Productions. Now NCH is responsible for, for most, of, most of the animation here, but I did a lot of the secondary stuff like uh, motion blur and these speed lines. That's what we're going to be creating today. These little speed lines that are just jittering in and out on the sides. Um, the whole point about it is that it kind of tighten, tightens your view um, so that you focus on what's in the center more of. And also it just kind of acts as a little bit of a thing that you know makes it a lot like it's just a, something to see as well like it's just additional material because otherwise it's just not going to be as powerful um now in some ways some people might argue about it maybe this is just like too much or something like that but you know it's up to you on it i just like to have it a lot more emphasis on the motion and i just really like to put it anywhere i want to show you a method that's easy to deploy anywhere so you'll be able to use this in your um live action stuff you could use this in your film stuff and you know it pretty much goes anywhere so without further ado let's get started in after effects so I already got some things going on here, and I want to first of all mention that this is a 1K 10 second composition composition that I created. Uh, it's a 1K because, well, it's just fast, you know, it's just easy to handle that resolution. It could be any resolution you want, it could be 16 to 9, it could be anything. The reason why I'm using a square is because it's easy to deploy at like a stamp, you know, you can just stamp them anywhere you want. Um, you could reuse it uh, to any resolution and that's just kind of like a thing that's easy to handle and I guess I like that. And inside of that composition, I have a solid, just a black solid here that's not really doing anything. Okay, so this is going to be our basis of the effect. And we're going to go into our effects and presets and we're going to create something called fractal noise. And then we'll click on that and now we got ourselves a bunch of clouds. Really cool, not the effect that we're going for. So inside of our fractal noise, we're going to set some things up. Uh, we got transform, twirl that down, and underneath it, there's uh, something called uniform scaling. Uncheck that. Okay, now we're going to get two sliders here, uh, scale width and scale height. We want to make sure, we're gonna just going to play with the scale width. You could also play with scale height, of course, but I'm just going to go with width. Okay, I'm going to set the uh, scale width from 600 all the way to 10,000, which is the maximum number that it accepts. Doesn't go any further than that. But yeah, like, you know, the slider is kind of deceiving as if it goes even further than that. No one ever, like, I didn't even know about it until, like, I played around with it. Anyway, uh, set your scale height to something a lot lower so that you could kind of get this whole, like, you know, more bands of stuff going on. And uh, this isn't really, yeah, it looks really straight, but it's actually not. And I'll show you why in a sec. But first of all, let's animate it. Okay. So in our fractal noise, we're not going to use the evolution. We're just going to use the evolution options. And in here, there's something called random seed. I kind of want, I like using this a lot more because it just kind of like randomizes the pattern. Um, you can make it so that it randomizes per frame. Uh, whereas the animation, uh, whereas the evolution slider, it's, it's like really subtle and it's not really that interesting. But if you like this effect a lot more, of course, go ahead and animate this one. Um, but we're going to be animating the random seed instead. So in order to randomly just kind of like make it a lot easier instead of like hitting keyframes, I'm just going to hit alt or option on your Mac and click on that. Now we're going to get our expression tab and inside of our expression, we're going to type in time multiplied by a variable like any number. I'm just going to type in 60. So now you can see it's jittering like that. Okay. What's really cool about it is that if you want to change the speed a little bit, let's say like we could do time multiplied by six and now it's just going to do kind of like a posterized time thing you know it's just doing that yeah so anyway uh if you input a number too large it kind of stops working after a while so just be careful with that i say 60 you know i'm just going to do 60 because i like that number so here we go just a bunch of lines that are jittering all over the place okay now let's get to the problem about this 
because fractal noise is just creating a bunch of, you know, it looks like it's creating a bunch of lines, but there's actually a little bit of curvature to each one. We're, all we did was just stretch out that cloud pattern that we just saw. So uh, what happens is if we enter fresh hold and just double click on CC fresh hold. And oh, I got to keep that clicked up right there. And I can see that there are these little jaggy lines and they just don't look that great unless you like them. I don't really know why, but yeah, they're just there. It's really jaggy and I just don't like it. So in order to remedy that, we are going to insert another stretching effect. Uh, we're going to use transform. I was about to forget how to type transform. We're just going to throw that in between uh, fractal noise and the CC threshold. So right there. And inside of that we're gonna go into our uniform scale uncheck that and then now we have our height and width which is backwards up width and height in the fractal noise pattern so just be careful um and you could just stretch it out all the way to 30,000, i believe was the maximum number and now we got ourselves a bunch of cool lines but wait okay so they just look like barcodes right now and i want to have i want to make sure the center of that is just the place where all the lines are not going to be at. You know, I just wanted to have it so that the center is, uh, well, what am I trying to describe? The center is basically where the action is going to be and the lines are going to be on the edges only. In order to do that, we're going to have to get rid of this fresh CC threshold and put that on a separate layer. Uh, and we're going to have to insert a couple effects in between just to kind of like mask certain areas out. So for now, we're just going to get rid of CC threshold like that. Okay. Now we are going to create um, uh, a um, shape layer and we are going to just add that in. So if you have your rectangle tool selected up here, just double click on that and that'll create a new shape layer. Uh, make sure you set your fill to linear gradient um, and that way you'll have it. If you didn't do that, don't worry. There's a whole thing about it. You could just use a gradient fill from this little add tab and that'll add a gradient fill in here. Now by default, it looks like crap. Um, that's not exactly what we wanted. Um, we wanna make sure that your gradient is doing something like this. Okay, so we got white on the edges, that's where the lines are gonna be. The black in the center, that's where the lines are gonna be disappearing. And the white on the other edge. Now you could always do something different, like, you know, for example, just get rid of the other black here. But yeah, for now, we're just gonna do this. Um, you could do this through effects. I think it's a lot easier just doing in shape layers. I, I guess I just like that way. But yeah, let's just set it so that these great this gradient stretches across. And now we have this nice gradient that's like a banding thing going on. We're going to multiply this effect right on top of that solid. Now we got um, this black area. And you can see how like it's just disappearing into it. Okay, so here's the cool part. We're going to create a new adjustment layer right on top, and we're going to uh, insert that um, threshold again. So CC threshold, and like so, now we got ourselves this sort of, well, it's just jittering on the corners, and now we can just kind of play around with it until we get to a point where we want to see stuff. But uh-oh, you know, these are just white big bars right here, so we're going to have to adjust a couple things. Go into your solid, into your fractal, fractal noise, and then just kind of play around with these two parameters here. Uh, the brightness and contrast is going to really affect the way some things look. And uh, just kind of like get it to your liking. It doesn't have to be perfectly the way I'm doing it. So yeah. And what's really cool about this effect is that you could pretty much insert any kind of gradient you want into it, right? Like so you could change the properties of this gradient any way you want. You could even get rid of the other side and so on. But there's a whole ton of cool stuff that you could do with it. And it's just up to your creativity on how you want to achieve the effect. Okay, so now how do we deploy this? So we have here a 1K composition. We're just going to create like a, uh, you know, like a full HD resolution thing. And I'm just going to make it like 20 seconds or 30 seconds long. Um, you know, just because there's like maybe one scene in here that I want to deploy something in. And uh, we're just going to create some very simple stuff here. And click on the fill, make it a solid color. Let's just have it so that, you know, this circle thing is just like speeding all over the place. Cool. All right. Going to insert that, drag and drop right in. And well, first of all, it's not going to be alpha out. So you're just going to deal with that. Uh, I would suggest just using like lighten or, um, you know, screen blend modes for 
this and now you got ourselves a composition that's kind of like transparent you know to some degree pretty cool um, and then we're gonna scale this up like that and so now we got ourselves that uh, red dot speeding anywhere and what's really cool about this is that because it's you know it's just a 1k resolution we can scale it to any way you want you know you could even rotate it right like 45 degree angle maybe just like scale it up and uh, fill in the corners and uh, let's rotate that as well. Just give it a, oops, let's give it a nice sort of rotation here. And now we got ourselves something that looks like it's on a 45 degree angle. Um, and now you could just copy and paste it, move it all over the place. Really cool stuff, very simple to do, um, easy to deploy. Uh, you could pretty much add this anywhere you want. You could even add color to this, of course, right? Like you could add um, effects on top of effects and you could have even more things going on. And just to know, as you can see, like I'm able to just deploy this on any composition, right? Like if I create another comp, I could just drag and drop that right in and have a completely different look to it. Um, and, and it'd still be the same thing. Um, it's just that there's one composition now that I could just control and it will change the parameters of everything else. That's just kind of like a warning, I guess. Like in some ways, maybe if you mess something up, then you're just going to change everything all at the same time. It might not be cool, but at the same time, it's a very convenient way of deploying something, um, especially an effect like this. So hopefully you guys um, like this tutorial. If anything, please subscribe. I'll keep making it more as I go along in 2017. Let's hope for the best. All right. See you guys in the future. Bye.